You can see here there was a headline covering the new orders by Governor Ivey, and you can see there this is ABC 3340. That is a news station out of Birmingham covering this. And the headline is, Governor Ivey loosens restrictions in new order despite rise in coronavirus cases. And this is the headline, of course, that are completely unbiased, are completely objective news organizations within the state of Alabama has put forward. Now, here's why that's really important, because I even had some people and, and, you know, people I like, people that I respect, people who have pretty sharp political opinions say, Caleb, why are you taking an issue with that one? That one's just stating the facts. Technically, yes, it is. There is nothing inside that headline that is non-factual. But here's the important thing to understand, and this is why media bias can be so detrimental. The big outrageous examples of there being an insane level of media bias is, of course, important. And it's, of course, important that we talk about those things. For example, talking about how the media was all over the Roy Moore story or the Brett Kavanaugh story on day one and couldn't wait to try to get all of the salacious rumors that had no basis in truth out there when it came to men like Brett Kavanaugh and Roy Moore out as soon as possible and literally waited 35 days and dozens of media appearances before anybody even dared to ask Joe Biden, hey, what's the deal with these, with, with these allegations against you? Big, giant, obvious uh, cases of media bias like that are, of course, important. But I think the far more deadly ones are the subtle ones. Because you understand by using the word despite in that headline, they are trying to drum up a specific assumption by the reader by having them read that sentence as though it's factually accurate. And it is factually accurate. Governor Ivey is loosening the restrictions. That is true. Coronavirus cases are on the rise. Also true. But you do realize that headline would technically still be true even if we had more, one more coronavirus case today. If we had one more coronavirus case today and had zero yesterday and zero the day before, and this thing was pretty much over, that headline would still technically be true. That as the coronavirus cases were increasing, KIV decided to loosen the restrictions. But you understand how misleading that would be? Now, in our case, the case we, we've had the single biggest day of gains in, in a, uh, sorry, biggest single day gains of coronavirus cases Today, that, that 400 and, or sorry, 544 new cases today. So you could see how you could say, well, okay, but that, that part's not misleading. But by saying despite, they're drumming up the idea that the action or the reaction from Governor Ivey is not the appropriate reaction. By saying despite the new cases of coronavirus going up, they are insinuating that her course of action is wrong and that the correct action or the action that she ought to take is not that. Now, if the same headline read, and by the way, the content of the article itself is pretty much fine. There's only one or two sentences I even take issue with. The, the content of the article is good, but the headline sets the table for the article and it sets the reader up to believe that those actions are wrong. And it also goes back to the whole moving the goalpost thing that they are assuming that just because the cases are increasing, that that is a bad idea. Or that's not supposed to happen when we open it up, which is not true. And that's never what, what the plan was. It was always to flatten the curve. And we knew that when we opened it back up, of course, the cases were going to increase. We knew that from the very beginning. But anyway, by insinuating that, they have very subtly taken the average reader, the person that you know, may not know all of those details and set it up to put out this message that what KIV is doing is incorrect, that her actions do not accurately reflect what should be done in this situation. If that same headline had read, Governor Ivy uh, loosens restrictions, that would have been the best version. I would have even taken, even though I think they're still trying to insinuate something, Governor Ivy loosens restrictions as coronavirus cases increase. I still take a little bit of issue with that because it feels like it's leading the reader somewhere. But ultimately, I think that that is still an accurate one. 
And I still would say that that is one that you could look at and go, all right, well, at least it's factually accurate. It's not assuming anything or trying to get the reader to assume anything as they're reading the article. That's the difference in subtle bias from the media. And the reason that it's far more dangerous is because it's so subtle that people don't realize they're being led in a certain direction. Even, like I said, people that I respect, people that pay a lot of attention to the news, people that are far more informed than the average person looked at that headline and went, I don't see the problem. Subtle media bias is the most dangerous one because it does not notify people that they are being led. It's harder for them to understand that they're being led to understand and interpret the news in a certain direction. And that's the problem with media bias as a whole. It's trying to influence as opposed to inform. Now me, I'm an opinion guy. I'm an influencer. I'm trying to influence you. I'm very open about that. That is something that is out in the open for you to understand. But with the news, who is supposed to be unbiased, they pretend and wear that mantle of objective journalism. And then while you're not looking, try to subtly sneak in influencing your ideas on what should or should not happen. That's the kind of media bias that is the most dangerous. It may not be the most uh, outrageous, but it's definitely the most dangerous. <laughs> Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow son of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.